Welcome everyone back to World Series News Underground for this week's latest COVID Statistics Australia. Let's start from the top, give you all the general information that we update every week for you. In Australia today, out of every 10,000 people, 9,997 of them do not have COVID. Out of over 196,000 tests conducted yesterday for all people who were told to be tested or chose to be tested, 9,975 out of every 10,000 people that were tested, tested negative. Out of every 10,000 people who get COVID in Australia, 9,900 of them will only get mild symptoms. On the screen now are in fact those mild symptoms that you can get out of every 10,000 people who catch COVID in Australia, 9,750 will survive regardless of their age, regardless of their health status, and regardless whether they're vaccinated or unvaccinated. According to the latest government statistics, there are 427 people hospitalized for COVID in Australia. There are 1,044 hospitals in Australia. So on averages, there are fewer than one person with COVID for every two hospitals in Australia. New South Wales remains in lockdown completely as a result of Premier Berejiklian ruling Saturday at 2.30 p.m. that all towns in Australia will go into a compulsory lockdown. Some of these towns have not had a case of COVID yet, not one. They've never had a lockdown. They've never worn a mask. They've just gone about their daily business and they don't have any COVID cases. So those towns and many of them in New South Wales went into lockdown for a week as of yesterday. Nationals MP Andrew Constance made a quote on social media to the tune of, despite no cases in some areas going into lockdown, it is inevitable there will be. What? Did Andrew Constance just say that despite there being towns that have never had a single case of COVID, now that they're going into lockdown, it's inevitable that they will get cases? Is something in the data that we're not seeing? Is there something out there that's changing what is an impossibility. And if lockdowns are by definition ineffective at holding off cases where there are no cases, then why are we going into lockdown? Beating your head against the wall, doing the same thing over and over again is the definition of insanity. And it seems that our government is the one that's hysterical and the government that's pushing this insanity. Let's drill down now on the detail because the devil is always in the detail. Okay, age groups. Let's break it down by case. In the age group of zero to nine years of age, there has been a total of 2,516 cases for zero deaths. In the age groups of 10 to 19, there's been 3,765 cases of COVID. For zero deaths, for ages 20 to 29, there's been 8,293 cases. For two deaths, that means that 9,998 people out of 10,000 who catch COVID between the ages of 20 to 29 survive. Between the ages of 30 and 39, there's been 6,731 cases. There's been a total of four deaths and the survival rate is 99.94%, or out of every 10,000 people who catch COVID between the ages of 30 and 39, 9,994 of them survive, regardless if they're vaccinated or not. In the age group 40 to 49, there's been 4,788 cases, there's been three deaths, and the survival rate is exactly the same, 9,994 out of 10,000 people will survive COVID between 40 and 49 years of age. In the age groups of naught, uh, sorry, 50, in the age group of 50 to 59, there's been 4,359 cases. There's been a total of 16 deaths, which means that 9,963 people out of every 10,000 who catch COVID between the ages of 50 and 59 survive. 
In the age group 60 to 69, there's been 2,912 cases. There's been a total of 44 deaths and a survival rate of 9,447 out of 10,000 people vaccinated or not survive COVID. In the age group of 70 to 79, there's been 1,855 cases. There has been 161 deaths. That means that 7,876 people out of 10,000 survive. In the 80 to 89 age bracket, there's been 1,404 cases. There's been 394 deaths. That means that in the 80 to 89 age bracket, the survival rate for every 10,000 people who catch COVID is 7,690, whether they've had vaccine or not. In the age group 90 plus, this is everyone that's exceeded life expectancy by a long way in Australia. There's been 822 cases total. And out of those 822 cases, we've seen 325 deaths, which means that 6,046 people out of every 10,000 people over the age of 90 who have exceeded life age expectancy will still survive. More people will survive COVID than not survive COVID, vaccinated or not, over the age of 90, according to official government statistics on health.gov.au. Now, here's the big breaking story that comes out of that. If you drill down on aged deaths, that is people over the age of 80, which presumably would be the vast majority of those in um, nursing home aged care facilities. Yes, there will be people in their 70s and yes, there'll even be a few in their 60s with um, problems such as uh, advanced dementia, etc. But for the sake of the argument, and when you look at the actual numbers, they're very small and can be reduced from this statistical comparison because those numbers simply aren't available. So if we assume that all nursing home deaths that occurred in Victoria and in New South Wales as a result of government failure, that being Daniel Andrews in Victoria and in New South Wales, Brad Hazard and Kerry Champ with the New March fiasco, you can remove 685 deaths in aged care from the 80s and 90s from the total statistics. So what that means is for all deaths over the age of 80 and 90, there have been 719 deaths in Australia of people over the age of 80. Out of those, 685 of those can be confirmed to the Victorian aged care disaster of last year and the New March nursing home in New South Wales as well. So what that means is that there's only been, outside of those aged care facilities, only 582 cases of COVID amongst all people over the age of 80 for a total of 34 deaths with a survival rate of 94.1%. That means that outside of aged care in Australia, which has now been entirely fixed up, the survival rate in people over the age of 80 with COVID, vaccinated or not, is 94.1%. This is an astonishing statistic that no one is reporting, that no one is looking at, and you'll only find here on World Series News Underground. The purpose of what we're doing is explaining to you that the numbers never lie and that you have a choice over what decision that you want to make for your own health. Do you go down the vaccine path? Or if you're not sure, what can you do? And that's where the A Million Mums for Informed Consent movement was born, simply to say that it is the law the Constitution, the Nuremberg Code, the Helsinki Declaration, and the rules of clinical testing all maintain that an individual must make and give informed consent over any medicine that they choose to put into their body. In other words, it is your choice. Nobody can tell you that you have to put a medicine into your body and specifically one that comes with significant risks, some which are known and some which are not known because this vaccine is still in its trial phase and it still needs to a long time to look at the long-term effects. So it is perfectly reasonable for any individual to question it. What is unreasonable is when governments, when media, when bureaucracy, when your friends and your family all pressure you to do something against your will, that is against your own gut feeling, your own intuition, and your own research and due diligence that tells you that you're just holding off to understand what's going on. The purpose of A Million Moms for Informed Consent is simple. It's designed 
to give you a safe place to come, to get information, to compare notes, to talk to others, and to understand why it is that you as a parent are feeling the way that you do. Are you alone? Definitely not. Are there a million mums? We're getting, we're getting up there. There are more and more people coming every day. We're in our early stages, but please check it out. Know that you're not on your own. The final report for this week is the TGA. The TGA's results are down to 35 people out of every 10,000 will record a vaccine injury. There's been over 427 deaths now um, post-vaccine. Of those have been investigated and the TGA is admitting that at least seven of them were caused by the vaccine, specifically by TTS. At the moment, all other uh, cases are being looked into or have been resolved to not been having been caused by the vaccine. However, you are statistically more likely, if you're under 50 in Australia today, to report a vaccine injury than you are to die from COVID. Are we really in a crisis? Today in Australia, there are 359 people in hospital on the ward for COVID. And in Australia today, there are 68 people in intensive care units with COVID, presumably on ventilators. For comparison, there are 1,044 hospitals in Australia. So fewer than half a person per hospital has COVID or with COVID today. There are fewer than one person per two hospitals in Australia today with COVID. In New South Wales, there are 328 hospitals and there are 378 people in them with COVID, that's your highest rate. That's 1.15 people per hospital with COVID today. And the lowest rate is Tasmania where nobody's in hospital with COVID and they have 24 hospitals. In Queensland, there are 41 people in 263 hospitals. There are, in Victoria, there are three people in 194 hospitals. South Australia has two people in 103 hospitals. WA has one person out of 116 hospitals. The ACT has no people in nine hospitals. And the Northern Territory has two people in seven hospitals. The biggest problem that we have at the moment with our statistics is that we're not getting the numbers on important information. For example, how many suicides have occurred in the last 12 months? How many in the 12 months before that? How many in the 12 months before that? How many people have had the flu this year and last year and the year before that? How many people have lost their jobs this year and last year and the year before that? How many people have lost their businesses this year and last year and the year before that? How many people have gone through divorce this year, last year and the year before that? How many people have suffered the loss of a loved one due to COVID isolation suicide this year? or last year? How many people talked about it? How many people this year are talking about seeing a psychologist or a counsellor compared to last year and the year before? All of these figures, all of these statistics are not being looked at by the government. They're throwing lip service by saying, yeah, go get your health checked or mental health, go see your doctor. But seriously, who's able to do that today? You're not allowed to leave your house. If you do go leave your house, you're under stress, you're under duress. It just becomes harder and harder. So our mental health is at a crossroads. We have to do more about our mental health. We have to check on our loved ones. We have to check on our friends and we should be on the telephone more now than ever. A simple message or a text might be enough, but the voice, the hearing of someone else, the feeling of how someone else is doing to trade notes, to check out, to look out for each other is paramount. If the government's not going to provide it, we the people are going to have to provide it for ourselves. Yes, it's one thing to make sure everyone's washed their hands and wearing their masks and doing what they're expected to do. But what about the people who are on tender hooks and their life is at a crossroads and they are in peril? If you're sitting at home for your fifth, sixth, seventh week and you live at home on your own, what are you meant to do? How do you live at home on your own? How do you survive on your own? And what are you doing? If you need somewhere to talk, there are groups available and you're welcome to come into A Million Mums for Informed Consent and chat with other people there that would love to help you out. Check out the website below, amillionmums.com. Check us out on World Series News Underground TV. There'll also be a page on the Million Mums website so you can get access to the latest information. So that's been the end of our report for this week. Please check out future reports. Also look out for our short report, little one-minute videos coming soon, and share that information as far and as wide as you can. This is World Series News Underground. See you next time.